I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on linear inequalities. Here is a worksheet for you to practice. We have five questions here. Question number one is to solve some linear inequalities. Two of them are double inequalities, part E and F. I like you to make a note of these questions, solve them, and uh, then look into my suggestions. I think you can see first two questions. Now, here are question number three, four, and five. Question number five is a multiple choice test question. Let's now begin answering them one by one. Question number one is solve linear inequalities and represent the answer on it number line. 2x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 15. So to solve, we can take away 5 from both the sides. So we get 2x is greater than or equal to 15 minus 5. So what we get here is 2x is greater than or equal to 10. Dividing by 2, we get x is greater than or equal to 5. To represent them on a number line, uh, let us say this is our number line. We want to represent x greater than or equal to 5. Let's say this is 0 for us. And this is 5 for us. Greater than or equal to will be a filled in circle. So we are going to fill this up and draw the arrow towards the right. So that makes greater than or equal to 5. Clear? The second question here is 2 minus 3x is less than 11. So we'll take away 2. So we've got minus 3x is less than 11 minus 2. Now, we could rewrite this as minus 3x is less than 9. Now we'll divide by minus 3. Now when you divide by minus 3, the sign here also changes. So what we get here is that x is greater than 9 divided by minus 3. So this is a very important step. I like you to make a note of this step and that is when you multiply by a negative then the sign changes. Do you see that? So uh, if you don't change the sign you'll get a wrong answer. So we get x as greater than minus 3. Correct. So let's also sketch this solution on a number line. So we have here a number line and let us say that the zero here is at this place minus 3 it is greater than minus 3 not equal to minus 3 right so so we'll draw a hole here not filled in circle and then show an arrow on the right side this point here is minus 3 correct now at this point I also want to highlight one thing and that is when you provide your solutions, you can do a zero check. That really means that in my solution set, zero is not a solution, right? So if I write zero, we get five is greater than or equal to 15, which is wrong. So that is zero check, right? Here, zero is a part of solution. If I write zero here, 0 is greater than minus 5 is correct. Correct. So 0 check will tell you that if I write x as 0, then 0 is greater than minus 3 is true. So perfect, right? Now if I write 0 here right, in my equation, I get 5 is greater than or equal to 15, which is false. So this is correct. Do you see that? Zero is not a part of my solution. So you could actually perform a quick test just to see if you got the right answer or not. Does it make sense to you, right? Here, if you put zero, what I'm trying to say is you get two is less than 11, right? For x equals to zero, and that is correct. So zero is a part of solution, right? So I hope you got this concept. So let's move on and continue. Now we have some fractions. We'll bring the x terms together. We have 2 over 3x minus 1 over 3x 
the constants on the other side 5 plus 2 now 2 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is 1 over 3x so you get 1 over 3x is greater than 7 cross multiply so we get x is greater than 7 times 3 so we get x is greater than 21 correct so that is what it is on a number line I can show this solution as on a number line x is greater than 21 so not included but that is how I'm going to show is that clear to you here we have to open the bracket and then solve so when you open the bracket you get 3x minus 6 is less than or equal to 2x plus 2 plus 5 get the x terms together 3x minus 2x the constants on the other side 6 plus 2 plus 5 so we get x is less than or equal to 7 plus 5 is 12 right so we do have a solution here which is that the value of x is less than or equal to 12 so we have a filled in circle in this case correct 0 is a part of solution here right so let's say 0 is somewhere here and this is 12 for us correct in this case 0 is not a part of solution do you see that so you can do a 0 check to verify if you got the right answer or not now let's talk about double inequalities whenever you have a situation where the variable is only in one of these terms we could directly solve it so here we have 2x plus 3 we want to get rid of 3 so we'll take away 3 from each and every term right so we have 15 minus 3 greater than or equal to minus 7 minus 3 right so we took away 3 from each term so what we got here was minus 10 less than equals 2x less than equals to 12 now we can divide by 2 so dividing by 2 we get minus 10 by 2 less than equal to x less than equals to 12 divided by 2 so the x is greater than or equals to minus of 5 and less than or equal to 6 on a number line the solution is in between minus 5 and 6 both included right so we'll fill this up both included 0 this is minus 5 this is 6 0 is somewhere here is that clear to you so that becomes the solution the next question here we have x in two parts now when that is the situation in that case you may have to split it into two different inequalities to solve right so and then we'll take and condition and then we'll take and condition that both are true right so and both should be true is that clear so let's divide this into two inequalities and solve them individually so what we have here is that x is less than 2x minus 4 so bringing x here and 4 on the other side we get 2x minus x sorry and therefore we have 4 is less than x correct so we have one solution on the other side we have 2x minus 4 is less than 12 bringing 4 we get 2x minus 12 uh, 12 plus 4 so we have 2x is less than 16 or x is less than 16 divided by 2 or we can say x is less than 8 so basically if you look at it we are working with two different kinds of solutions here one is saying that x is less than 8 right so let's say 8 is here so one is saying that x is on the left side of 8 the other one is saying that x is greater than 4 right so let's say let's say somewhere here we have 4 right we are saying x is greater than 4 right so definitely we have a combination here and uh, the combination which makes it true is that 4 is not included 8 is not included but everything in between is included so we have a solution here which is uh, which you could write as x is greater than 4 however it is less than 8 correct so that could be your solution in inequalities and that is on a number line so i hope with this you understand how to solve inequalities using basic operations of uh, 
reverse operations and represent the results on a number line. Now here is question number two for you. I'd like you to pause the video, answer these questions and then look into my suggestions. Question number two. Translate the verbal phrases into an inequality. A. 5 less than the product of 4 and x is less than 50. So 5 less than product of 4x. So product of 4x will be 4x, correct? So that means we are saying product of 4x will be 4x. 5 less than, so it would be minus 5 is less than so it's less than 50 do you see that so that becomes the inequality and that is how we are going to write it b is the product of 5 and sum of 9 and x is less than or equal to sum of 45 and 5x so it's slightly confusing it says product of 5 so there are two things which are getting multiplied 5 and sum of 9 and x, right? So, so that really means we are multiplying 5 with sum of 9 and x. Do you see that? It's less than or equal to, it's less than or equal to sum of 45 and 5x. So that is how this inequality will be written. So I'd like you to closely look into this and understand how we have written the solution. So let's move on to question number three now, which is write an inequality of the form ax plus b is less than five, such that the solutions are all real numbers greater than nine. So we have to start with ax plus b less than five. And what we want here is that the solutions are all real numbers greater than nine. We want x greater than nine. Okay, so think like this. Uh, if we just go kind of reverse calculations, we could think like this. If b is equals to minus 4, then bringing it here will make it 9, right? So, so we can write this as ax minus 4 less than 5. So bringing it here, we get ax is less than 5 plus 4, which is 9, correct? Uh, but really speaking, we want greater than. How do I get greater than? Well, I can say a is equals to minus 1. So if I put a as minus 1, then, then I get minus x is less than 9. And th that results into what we are looking for, which is x is greater than 9. Do you get the, the idea, right? So, so working in this fashion, we kind of get the values of a and b. So what we found here is that a is equal to minus 1 and b equals to uh, minus 4. Now there could be many solutions. This is one possible solution. Is that clear, right? So definitely there are many solutions to such questions, but that's kind of an easy approach to get to your solution. Clear? Question number 4. Your marks in the first three tests are 70, 76, and 82. What are the possible marks out of maximum 100 that you need to get in the fourth test for an average of at least 80? So you want average of at least 80. So how can we calculate this? So if you are looking into average of 80 in four tests, so that really means total of 80 times 4, right? Which is 320, correct? And that too, at least, right? How much do you have at present? You have 70 plus 76 plus 82, which is, when you add them, you get 8, and 14 and 8 is 22. So you have to take away this from 320. So how much more you need? So that's the calculation, right? So, so what we need to do here is to calculate how much more do we need, right? So how much more?
to get total 320. So obviously we'll do 320 minus 228 and that gives you 292. So this gives you at least 92 in the fourth test. Correct. So we could write the value as an inequality that is this x should be greater than equal to 92 but it can be only less than 100 because that is the maximum mark. Correct? So that is how you get your solution to this type of question. The last question here is you want to buy a shirt at a store and you can spend at most $25. You have a discount coupon of $5 off any item at the store. Which inequality will you use to find the original price P of the shirt? Four choices are given to you. You can always uh, pause the video and answer this question. So, well, you can spend 25 but you have $5 coupon, so you can spend 30 maximum. So that is P value, correct? So any equation which gives you 30 maximum, that means we're looking for uh, P less than or equal to 30, correct? So if I solve the last one here, bringing 25 to the right side, that gives me P is less than or equal to 30, so that is the correct answer, right? Those ones are indeed incorrect. Is that clear to you? So it's better to get your answer first in your mind and then look into the suggestions. Otherwise, it is very confusing at times. So I hope with this, you understand the basic concept of uh, solving inequalities. Uh, take this as a practice worksheet and I hope that should help. Feel free to write a comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.